as data sets become bigger and more complex. What we're looking for is leveraging AI, machine learning, all these advanced IT tools to achieve data-driven or evidence-driven machine-human optimized workflow collaboration. To achieve this collaboration, there has been a lot of advancements in deep learning and machine learning. One of the big advancements or improvements that we see in the recent years is, is the ability to segment certain organs of the body. This includes applying machine learning algorithms and deep learning algorithms like image segmentation to identify the area of the organ that needs diagnosis. Semantic segmentation is a deep learning technique that involves dividing an image into multiple segments or regions, each corresponding to a different object or part of an object. Semantic segmentation has a wide range of applications, including medical imaging, autonomous vehicles, and computer vision. In medical imaging, for example, semantic segmentation can be used to segment organs or tissues within an image, making it easier to analyze and diagnose various conditions. In this video, we will explore the basics of semantic segmentation and how it can be applied to various applications. We will also take a closer look at the unit model and how it can be used to perform semantic segmentation. So if you are interested in deep learning and computer vision, or if you want to learn more about semantic segmentation and its application in medical imaging, be sure to stick around. There are tons of resources available online that talks about the concept of uh, semantic segmentation and segmentation in general. I really like this video from Professor Justin Johansson from Stanford University where he talks about semantic segmentation and instant segmentation. You can find the link in the description for more details on the video. Let's hear from Professor Justin Johnson on what he thinks semantic segmentation is and how it can be used in the concept of uh, medical imaging. Um, so first is the problem of semantic segmentation. So when we're the problem of, in the problem of semantic segmentation, we want to input an image and then output um, a decision of a category for every pixel in that image. So for every pixel in, in this, in, so this input image, for example, is this cat walking through the field. He's very cute. Um, and in the output, we want to say, for every pixel, is that pixel cat, or grass, or sky, or trees, or background, or, or some other set of categories. So we're going to have some set of categories, just like we did in the image classification case. But now, rather than assigning a single category label to the entire image, we want to produce a category label for each pixel of the input image. Um, and this is called semantic segmentation. UNIT is often used for semantic segmentation due to its ability to handle large amount of data and its high performance on image segmentation tasks. UNIT is a deep learning architecture that was developed for image segmentation tasks. The model is called UNIT because of its U-shaped architecture where the contracting path is followed by an expanding path which results in a shoe shape. The UNIT architecture consists of two main paths, the contracting path and the expanding path. The contracting path is a series of configuration and max pulling layers that capture the context and details of an image. The expanding path, on the other hand, is a series of upsampling layers in concatenation with the corresponding feature maps from the contracting path. This helps in preserving the information from the contracting path and adding the required details for the segmentation. The contracting path consists of a series of convolution and max pulling layers that gradually reduce the spatial dimension of the input image by increasing the number of filters. This allows the model to capture the context of the image and extract high-level features. The expanding path consists of a series of transposed convolution and upsampling layers that gradually increases the spatial dimension of the features by reducing the number of each filters. This allows the model to incorporate fine details and make precise predictions. The contracting and expanding paths are connected through skip connections, which can generate the features from the corresponding layer in the contracting path with the corresponding features from the upsampled layers in the expanding path. This allows the model to preserve the high-level context and fine-grained details at each step in the process. The final layer of the unit model is a 1x1 convolution layer that introduces a segmentation mask with the spatial dimensions as the input image. Each pixels in the segmentation mask corresponds to a particular class or object in the image. The unit is trained using a loss function that measures the difference between the predicted segmentation mask and the ground truth mask. The model is then optimized to minimize the loss using gradient descent or a similar optimization algorithm. Overall, the U-shaped architecture of unit allows it to effectively combine high-level context and fine-grained details, making it a well-suited suited model for main segmentation tasks. We have a basic understanding of UNIT architecture now. Let's try to code UNIT in PyTorch. I wouldn't be coding directly. Uh, let's use ChatGPT for the code because we just have to understand the 
uh, how the code looks like. Um, so I'll ask chat GPT uh, code unit for medical imaging unit for medical image segmentation in Keras. Let's let's use Keras actually. So here is the implementation for a unit model uh, in Keras. So basically uh, we are importing Keras. Uh, so in each, so as we know that there are two paths in unit, uh, one is the contracting path and the second one is the expanding path. So in this case, we have built the contracting path. So you can see uh, we built our contracting path uh, from the inputs. So you started with the in contracting path and then after the first path is complete. So what we what we do in the contracting path is just a general convolution network that you can use ResNet as well. And what happens here is it doubles your channels, but reduce the spatial dimensions by half. So in this case, adding the max pooling layer just does help in that. And um, so basically there are four here. So you start with a 32 and 64, 128, 256 is going to go up to uh, 1024. And once this is done, and this is the expensive path called expanding, expanding path. Uh, this is the slower of the two. And in this case, what happens here is at the bottom, once it reaches, uh, uh, so it basically this whole process, the bottom is called bottleneck and it, it basically does the con reverse or the converse transpose con convolution and starts to build from the, from the base and, uh, up sample it. Uh, so it's in this case here, it's basically transposing it and then just upsample the whole layers. So, so it seems like it became too much of the text for chat GPT. So it failed. So rather than building everything from scratch and testing its boundaries, let's just ask, build the decoder of UNET in Keras. This should be uh, a bit faster to understand. So this is the decoder part. So expensive path, of course, the expanding path, which we call, and it's gonna, so it just find the convolution transpose. You edit the functions, so you can see here, so it's still building. So it's basically reverse uh, operation. Uh, one thing you have to remember that it also is using the skip connections here. So basically there are three inputs here, right? Uh, one is the input, Receiving inputs, the input of the skip connection and the number of filters in the particular building block. So the implementation takes in the inputs, the output from the request encoding part of the unit and number of classes, the number of classes to the segments in the image, the number of filters can also be adjusted with the filters uh, argument by defining the number of filters currently. So here you have the filters, but you can adjust that accordingly uh, as you want. So ChatGPT did e, uh, a great, uh, uh, gave us a great example. Uh, now, maybe we can try to see how to use a pre-built unit model for brain segmentation. Let's say, let's say that. Let's see if, if ChatGPT has this already figured out. So that's great. Uh, so here it is using a pre-trained unit model. Uh, and uh, so it loaded the pre-trained model, which is the unit model dot h5. Uh, this is this is amazing. Like uh, honestly, I'm surprised that uh, ChatGPT is able to figure this out. So it loaded the unit model. Uh, now basically, it is a, uh, applying the categorical cross entropy and then building this whole code basically to to this example assumes that you have already trained a unit model and saved to a file named this. The model is loaded using the load model function in Keras. So you basically loaded the model. Uh, the input layer is defined and the pre-trained model in instantiated with the input Keras, uh, input tensor. So basically you, you, you created this tensor. Um, the model is then compiled with the atom optimizer, which is and categorical cross entropy loss. Uh, categorical cross entropy loss is, is the most op important cost function, I would say. And, um, so the cr categorical cross entropy loss is is basically also called soft ma soft max loss, right? And uh, so this the idea behind critical cross entropy loss is that it returns a probability rather than returning you one or zero. That's why it returns a mask rather than returning unit returns a mask. Then the training data is loaded and normalized by dividing by two fifty five. The model is then fit on the training data using the fit method, which is basically here. Note that this is a general design, and obviously you need to change your code uh, accordingly. But so this is how the 
the model works. So basically you train the model, you apply the critical gloss entropy because you need to return the probability map uh, and then basically you fit the model. So this is how for training and then predict you can call on a new brain MRI data set, which is this is how the unit model works. There is also an article from AI Summer which talks about the different kinds of unit models available or modified unit. So we talked about our, your, our general unit which is very simple. The code is given. I really like AI Summer because they have a very detailed blog post sometimes and they are very, very clear with their blogs. So VNet, they might mention here and VNet is a modified version of unit, uh, which is basically let's, let's go over that later, but like, let's look at 3D unit first. 3D unit was introduced shortly after the unit to process volumes. The, uh, the main reason is that most of the medical images that you think of like CT images, right? These are 3D volumes, not 2D. There is so having a 3D volume and segmenting a 3D volume is much better than going with the 3, 2D images. So 3D unit was introduced. Only three layers are shown, but it could be many multiple layers. You can read about this uh, uh, 3D unit online. There is a paper release for that. There is VNet model, which is basically a unit to process 3D MRI volumes in contrast to processing the inputs. 3D volume slice-wise, they propose to use 3D convolutions uh, because obviously in the end, medical images have an inherent 3D structure. And then, so if you look at it here, so you have these input volumes, you add. So I, I don't want to go in too much details of these. Uh, and then the last one is the unit plus plus, which is a modified version of unit is uh, a skip connection used in unit directly fast forwards, high resolution feature maps from the encoder to the decoder network. The result is the concatenation of semantically similar feature maps is to bridge the semantic gap between the feature maps of the encoder and decoder before concatenation to this end in it plus plus based on both nested and dense skip connections, you can effectively capture the fine grained details of the 2D image. So basically it is much more optimized for this purpose and you can check out other new units like no new inet, no new net, the established unit basically for baseline for semantic it was for this. And I don't want to get too much in details of this so you can read about this, but overall this is how the basics of unit are. Uh, hopefully you would have got a good understanding and uh, we will see you in the next uh, presentation. So one thing actually before we cut, um, there are uh, what are the metrics to measure segmentation, right? So so that's the general question that comes up. So how would you evaluate your sig semantic sig semantic uh, segmentation model? So multiple metrics are available: interactions, intersections over union, which is also called Jacquard index or intersection over union or IOU. There is also dice coefficient. Uh, that you can use. I think the dice coefficient is also quite a lot used. Higher the dice co coefficient, higher the better is your uh, better is your uh, segmentation mass. So these are some of the some of the metrics that you can use. You can also use um, there is I guess I forgot now. Let me think. Uh, pixel accuracy, which is not the best uh, best process. It is just the percentage of pixels in image that are classified correctly. Uh, it is obviously the easiest to understand, but it is not the best accuracy. So I would suggest using dice coefficient or uh, Jacquard index for your... In medical imaging, unit is used to segment organs, tissues, lesions, or other structures within an image. For example, in CT scans, unit can be used to segment the liver or the kidneys or heart, making it easier to analyze and diagnose various conditions. Unit has shown excellent performance on a variety of medical imaging tasks. It is wisely used and adopted in the medical imaging community due to its combination of good performance, ease of implementation, transferability, and explainability. However, it is important to note that the results of UNAT and other deep learning models in medical imaging should always be validated and thoroughly understood before they can be used in clinical practice. This requires careful analysis of the model's prediction and the use of appropriate validation methods.